Hey, greetings from London. This is Bill Mara, I'm Zero HBR. Uh, Mike, KL7R R and I have been talking about a variety of things on our Solder Smoke podcast, and one of the things that I've been mentioning quite a bit is my 20 meter double sideband uh, transceiver that I've been running here from London. It's a QRP rig, it's completely homebrew. I've been hacking away at it for a long time, and I thought it would probably be a good idea to show you guys what we've been talking about. This is the rig back here. You can see it's built in two little boxes. I have the transceiver here, and this is the outboard linear. Uh, the transceiver is constructed in a PC board box, and the linear is in a separate enclosure off to the right. It's kind of uh, an interesting rig, I think. It, it, it runs off of uh, 12 volts DC. I use it with solar power panels that I got from uh, eBay, uh, originally from Volkswagen. The rig uses primarily any 602 chips, both in receive and transmit, and with the linear amplifier I put out about 5 watts. I'll go over to the, uh, to the bench now, open it up and show you guys what it looks like inside. Here's the transceiver with the uh, top off. The receiver section is over here, and it starts with an NE602 chip that's used as an RF amplifier. Before that, there's a bandpass filter. This is the TR relay. The, NE60, the first NE602 chip goes to a second chip, which is the product detector. It then goes on to a third NE602 chip that serves as the first AF amplifier, and then on to an LM386 that boosts the AF signal out to the uh, earphone or speaker. I often use this thing with a little uh, amplified computer speaker that I just plug into the earphone jack. There's a, there's a volume control. Um, the, on the transmit side, the oscillator, which is the only stage common to both the transmitter and the receiver, is here. It started out as a variable crystal oscillator, but after reading about the wonders of ceramic resonators in Sprat, the journal of the GQ or P Club, I tried to give ceramic resonators a try. And these are these two blue things here are 14.3 megahertz ceramic resonators. I found that I could get quite a bit of frequency shift with uh, stability using two of these things. Uh, this is a switch that switches from one ceramic resonator to a configuration where we have two in parallel. And I found that that gives pretty good frequency coverage. I'll tilt this up. You can see that um, in one position it goes from 14.282 to 14.322 and then in another position the rig tunes from 14.266 to 14.304. There is quite a bit of overlap but that's, that's okay. Um, on the transmit side from the, uh, the oscillator we go to an NE602 chip that serves as the balance modulator and the audio comes in here through a simple uh, 741 op amp. Um, the resulting double sideband signal comes out. I put it through various stages of RF amplification. Here's one stage that actually built up onto the inside wall of the rig because I ran out of space on the base and uh, then it goes into, uh, here's another RF amplifier and the, uh, the final amplifier inside the transceiver right here before it goes to the low-pass filter, the, um, the TR relay, and then out. The other box that I showed you before is the, uh, the amplifier that's here. It's just an, F, uh, an FET amplifier, very simple, and uh, maybe we'll discuss that in a future program. But that's it. That's the uh, the double sideband rig that I've been talking about on solder smoke. Um, as you can see, I'm a I'm a loyal adherent to ugly construction, and I hope this thing isn't uh, so ugly that it offends uh, someone's sensibilities. I don't think it will. I think you guys will appreciate the uh, the ugly uh, PC board Manhattan style construction. That's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.